This is part three of the hybrid SEC exciter. Here's the circuit. I'll show it, I hope, is a little clearer than what I showed in part one. But this is the circuit diagram of the operating exciter I showed in part two. You can see the difference in the base circuit, the positional difference of L1, C1. You can see how CA and CB are connected and how the battery is connected into the circuit. You can see that there's no direct DC path be to between the negative terminal of the battery and the negative rail of the circuit itself. Okay, here's the circuit I'm going to show you now. This is going to be part three, and we're going to be using this circuit. What I have done is eliminated the CB electrolytic, and we now only have CA and we are changing the connection method from the battery and the AV plug slightly in that now we're connecting to the canister of the electrolytic and I'll show you that in in the circuit when we get to it. If you want to see more detail on how this is utilized you can go to my website stifflerscientific.com look on the site content and pick early work of ESEG that's E-S-E-G, the early work. This will show a number of circuits that uh, I worked on over a long period of time utilizing this methodology in connection to the capacitor. Okay, let's go to the circuit and let me show you how that's operating. Okay, here's the circuit we're working with in part three. Here's the L3 coil coming off of the socketed end, which like I say, this is a proto board. Here's the AV plug. You can see the cathode end going to the plus rail, which goes back to the plus of the fuse on the battery. We see the anode end going to the canister of the capacitor. I'm using that copper tape so I can solder to it. And the negative is going to come off of the canister also and go up to the battery. I'm measuring the voltage across that battery at this time. It's 12.38 volts. We have no signal coming out of this uh, exciter at this time. And I will go ahead and connect this guy up. And here's something that you should notice right away. There is absolutely no change in that battery voltage when I hook the exciter up. If we look up here, we're seeing our signal that we should, well, just about see. Let me adjust the tuning just slightly to get it out of this multiple spectrum area. There we go. There's our typical stair step that we want to see. Okay, so we're operating. Our battery voltage is not going down. Make note of the fact that the battery voltage, the only time it should go down is if the exciter is off and the normal drop that you would see in the battery with either a decrease in temperature or the internal losses which occur over time. So you can see how this is configured. In part three here we're going to the canister of the capacitor. You see that capacitor is mounted through sockets onto the board very similar to what the 18 -1 was and the AV plug is coming back into the plus rail and going into the canister. There's no direct connection, as I stated, between the battery and the circuit itself. And there's this typical stair step signal we want to see. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take another look at that schematic and then we'll move on. Okay, here's our schematic again, and as you see, the 12-volt battery is going through a fuse to the canister of the capacitor. The anode of the AV plug diode is going to the negative of the battery, as well as the canister. The cathode is going to the plus rail, and we have no direct DC connection, except for what you might say is leakage current through that capacitor. But there's basically how it's operating. And here again, I want to caution you on this capacitor. 
over time it can become gassy it will bulge and at this time it's still considered to be an expendable as C weak CB was back in this initial schematic from part two.